In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit, that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. And the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ, was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Spirit be with you all and also with you. 
Let us pray. Almighty God, your sovereign, your sovereign purpose brings salvation to birth. Give us faith to be steadfast amid the tumults of this world, trusting that your kingdom comes and your will is done. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The book of Daniel is an example of apocalyptic literature, which is full of strange visions and symbolism. Arising during times of great persecution, apocalyptic literature is concerned with God's revelation about the end time and the coming kingdom of God, when God will vindicate the righteous who have been persecuted. The first reading is from Daniel chapter 12, beginning at the first verse. At that time, Michael, the great prince, the protector of your people, shall arise. There shall be a time of anguish such has never occurred since nations first came into existence. But at that time your people shall be delivered, everyone who is found written in the book. Many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Those who are wise shall shine like the brightness of the sky, and those who lead many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Images of worship and sacrifice are used throughout Hebrews to highlight what Christ has uniquely accomplished through his death. Because we have received forgiveness through Christ's death, we live with sincere hearts by trusting in God's promises and encouraging love and good works from each other. The second reading comes from Hebrews chapter 10, beginning at the 11th verse. Every priest stands day after day at his service, offering again and again the same sacrifices that can never take away sins. But when Christ had offered for all time a single sacrifice for sins, he sat down at the right hand of God, and since then has been waiting until his enemies would be made a footstool for his feet. For by a single offering, he has perfected for all time those who are sanctified. And the Holy Spirit also testifies to us. For after saying, this is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, says the Lord. I will put my laws in their hearts and I will write them on their minds. He also adds, I will remember their sins and their lawless deeds no more. Where there is forgiveness of these, there is no longer any offering for sin. Therefore, my friends, since we have confidence to enter the sanctuary by the blood of Jesus, by the new and living way that he opened for us through the curtain, that is, through his flesh, and since we have, been, we have a great priest over the house of God, let us approach with a true heart in full assurance of faith, with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience, and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who has promised is faithful. And let us consider how to provoke one another to love and good deeds, not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of the sun, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Grace and peace to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Just like today, back in 1690s, Jamaica was an island paradise. Palm trees in the sand, tropical breezes, beautiful beaches. People of wealth sought it out just like they do now. And many of them built huge mansions at a town called Port Royal. It was a pirate city. And those who lived back then knew it was one of the wickedest and most depraved cities on earth. If you could think of something evil people would do, they did it. But then in 1692, everything changed. In the space of less than 10 minutes, the thriving seaport was shaken by three earthquakes, one of which at about 7.6 on the Richter scale, which was followed by a tsunami. Port Royal literally sank into the Caribbean, never to rise again. An eyewitness described the scene. The earth heaved and swelled like the rolling billows, and in many places the earth cracked open, opened and shut with a quick motion and fast. And in some of these places, people were swallowed up. In others, they were caught by the middle and pressed to death. The entire event was filled with the noise of falling mountains at a distance, while the sky was turned dull and reddish, like a glowing oven. Of the city's population of approximately 6,500 people, about 2,000 died in the earthquakes and tsunami. Afterwards, lacking shelter and clean water, nearly 3,000 more died of disease. The people of Jamaica were so shaken by what, what took place that a religious revival swept through the island and they promptly outlawed piracy. Jesus is talking about the same type of destruction in today's gospel. The disciples are in Jerusalem with Jesus. They are seeing great buildings, the temple and the palaces, and how big the stones are that support these structures. There's a reason it took decades to build these places. They are large, stable buildings, and Jesus is predicting the end of stability in the world. But even more so, it was believed that the temple was where God resided. And if the stones of the temple were torn down, God would have no place to live, nowhere to go. God would be separated from his people, and for some, they believe Jesus' prediction to be blasphemy. So sitting outside the city, looking, up, uh, looking upon it on the Mount of Olives, the disciples want to know more. The big four, Peter, James, John, and Andrew, ask Jesus to explain more. When will it happen? What will be the signs? This is not particularly different than our own questions about bad things in life. We think if we know what is going to happen, we can be better prepared for it. But there is no way to prepare for this total destruction. It is the end of the world as they know it. It does not matter if you know when or what the signs will be, it is still going to happen. And there are going to be many signs, first of which people are going to claim to be Jesus. This is a weird thing for Jesus to say because he's sitting right there with them. He is telling them, though, that he is going away. And just like the temple, the palaces, he is going to be torn down and he is going to be destroyed. He is going to be separated from God's people, no longer be with them like he has been with them for decades. But now his life will be ending. And so others will come and claim to be him claim to have the truth, claim to teach them, claim there is something they must do, show some loyalty, whatever it is, they come to lead them astray. So they are warned to beware. Beware the charlatans who claim to be God among his people. And second, there will be rumors of wars, wars, earthquakes, and famines. Bad things are going to happen. The world is going to self-destruct. Jesus says, and oh, by the way, this is just the beginning. They are merely the birth pangs, a preparation for what is to come. Now, if I were a disciple, I would be scared out of my mind. 
And Jesus promised them this craziness, that their world is going to end in a horrific fashion. But Jesus is speaking to us too. For our world is the same world as the disciples, and it's going to end in horrific fashion. And it may be that we do not believe it will. Or it may be that Jesus said it's so long ago that now we say, so what? Or we, like the disciples, just do not understand what Jesus is even talking about. If we think about it, we know this world is going to end, and it pains us. There's a lot we love in this life. Our loved ones, first and foremost, family and friends, our homes, our nation, the land which surrounds us. There are things we love, and it is all going away, and it hurts. It tears us apart. More than any other thing that happens, we miss our loved ones who have already died. And these few verses from the Gospel of Mark seem not to do anything other than tells us Jesus knows it is all going to happen, and he tells us to be ready. It's hard to live in this world with the rumors of wars, the wars, the earthquakes and the famine, with the fires and the shootings, the tsunamis and cancer, with tornadoes and heart attacks, with blizzards and COVID, with floods and suicide. There's a lot that tears this world apart, that rips it down, that tosses stone from stone, that destroys. And when I hear Jesus say that this is just the birth pangs, I hear him say that things are going to get worse. But I also hear his promise. With all the terribleness around us, with everything that happens, Jesus promises it is going to get better. The time will come when the chaos of the world will all end. And when it all ends, God will no longer be separated from his people. This world will pass away, and God will dwell with his people. He will be their God, and they will be his people. And this might only provide you a little comfort right now. Because we yearn to see our loved ones again. To not have to worry about the chaos of this world. But it is meant to comfort us. That the terrible things which happen in our world will one day come to an end. Sin, evil, and death will come to an end, and we will be birthed into eternal life, a gift won for us through the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. For God has experienced all this world has to offer. God even endured death for us, so that nothing could separate us from him ever. It is how he has shown his love for us, joining us here in the chaos of this world, enduring, a, enduring it with us, mourning and crying with us, weeping and gnashing of teeth with us. God has done it all with us in the person, Jesus Christ. And God has demonstrated that death will be no more. For the women found that the tomb was empty that first Easter morning. And because of what Jesus has done, we have been joined to his life, death, and resurrection. We have been given his promise that God will bring an end to all that haunts us. And we and our loved ones will be left with his love forever. Amen.
to govern with insight and compassion. Make them mindful of the well-being of all people so that your world will flourish. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, our healer, you offer comfort and peace to all who call out to you. Give wisdom and understanding to all who struggle for wholeness. Send patience and relief to all who are sick, especially to those we name aloud or in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
God, our stronghold, you are pres present amid disaster. We pray for those affected by natural disasters. Come to the aid of all survivors of earthquakes, famines, floods, hurricanes, and wildfires, and the first responders who supported them. Calm their fear, supply their need, and be the solid ground beneath their feet. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, our guide, you are greater than we can imagine. Surround congregations with your expansive inclusion. Be present in the midst of disagreements, differences, and questions. Unite people of diverse viewpoints in the love of Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, our beginning and our end, your beloved people shine like the brightness of the sky. We thank you for the lives of all who rest in your eternal mercy. From famous saints to the people we have loved, assure us of your resurrection promise. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, our hope and strength, we entrust to you all for whom we pray. Remain with us always, through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Let us pray. God of love, you call us beloved children and welcome us to you. Receive our lives and the gifts we offer. Abide with us and send us in service to a suffering world. For the sake of your beloved child, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray. Praise and thanks to you, holy God, for by your word you made all things. You spoke light into darkness, called forth beauty from chaos, and brought life into being. For your word of life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. By your word you called your people Israel to tell of your wonderful gifts, freedom from captivity, water on the desert journey, a pathway home from exile, wisdom for life with you. For your word of life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. Through Jesus, your word made flesh, you speak to us and call us to witness. Forgiveness through the cross, life to those entombed by death, the way of your self-giving love. For your word of life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. Send your spirit of truth, O God. Rekindle your gifts within us. Renew our faith, increase our hope, and deepen our love for the sake of a world in need. Faithful to your word, O God, draw near to all who call on you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom, and teach us to boldly pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.